Hi everyone, welcome back to Waterhouse Ford. So, in our last video, you saw us um, putting the head back on. Um, so the, the, it's basically now starting to look like an engine again, which is uh, which is good news. So today, what we're going to do, uh, Oscar, is we're going to flip the engine over, and we're going to put the oil pump in, and then we're going to put the sump back on. Um, we've now received those uh, five and a half inch bolts, in the uh, length bolts that we needed. So yeah, we um, hopefully get the sump on and um, ba that will ba basically make the engine almost whole. Then on the next video, what we're going to do is um, start working, we'll flip the engine back up again and we'll start working on the top, basically on the, the valve train. Okay? Yep. So, let's get started. I'll flip the engine. Okay. Can you take the pin off? Okay. Some more. A little bit more. Almost. Okay. Okay. All right. And now we have the clamp shot. See what we've got. Okay. So we've given this all a nice clean. Um, there was a little bit of surface rust on this face again. Obviously it's been standing for a few months and despite having put some oil on it, there's quite a lot of moisture in this workshop unfortunately. We we're slightly underground here and um, it, we did get a little bit of surface rust, especially on these corners. But anyway, that's all cleaned up now. We've also just taken those off so they they're literally just proud of the surface, which is what we want. These cork ones are a little bit higher. We're going to see how that goes. If it doesn't, if it doesn't bolt down nicely, then we'll we'll take a little bit off those. But the first job we need to do is basically put the oil pump on. So to do that, we I mean it's really straightforward. We just get these nuts off. We put these back here just to keep them safe. Get some washers as well, so they just pop those off. So if you watched our previous video where we serviced the oil pump, you'll remember that we packaged it up and wrapped it basically in what's now essentially an oil cloth. So we'll just unpack that again. And there you go, see that's now all still nicely lubricated. No real issues there. We remember, we look in there, we've got the the key for the, the the rod that goes in here that's driven off the camshaft. But look, this is really straightforward. There's no gasket or anything. That basically just pops in there and we put the, the washers and the nuts on and the job's done. The oil pickup will sit something like that. And we'll get that sorted out in a minute when we put the uh, sump on and we get the um, the gauze lined up for for that. So come back with our washers. Thinking I might replace these washers. Actually, no, that looks very good. Yeah. So these are spring washers, and what you're looking for is that there's a good um, amount of spring basically left in the washer that is not flattened. Again, looking at the nuts, look for the shoulder. The shoulder goes down, or the flange. And we can tighten those up. This one's a bit stiff. Mm -hmm. 
Right now we do want these quite tight but they are only half inch bolts so you do need to be careful you don't want to break them off um, but of course you also don't want them coming off inside your engine so you want to make sure that they are nice and firm but of course there's no reason to break them off either or strip them that would be worse Okay, cool. Right, the next job. Just put a bit of grease on here. Again, we don't need a lot. Um, just enough to cover the surface. That'll do. And now we go to our Anglo supplied bottom gasket set, which is A43497. And we're going to bring out the sump gasket from that, which again, it's very obvious which one it is, looking at the shape and of course the size. There it is. Okay. And that goes on like that. Let me just line up all the holes. There we go, it's pretty much, doesn't quite line up unfortunately. I might try and turning it over, see if that helps. No, that doesn't all they don't line up that way, so it has to go this way. Okay. Just have to do it as best we can. See now these cork gaskets are sticking up a little bit. I'm, I'm really tempted to shave them down a little bit, but the, the general advice is to leave them and allow your sump, your sump basically to press them down. Um, I feel that we're going to have a we're going to have a leak there because that is it's almost five millimeters I would say sticking up there which um, is way too much I'm sure I'm afraid I'm going to I'm going to shave those down a bit
but to me they are just too high. So the paper gasket from this plate on the front here, I'm just going to try and tidy that up a bit. There we go. Okay, let's try that now. There we go. Now that's feeling, that looks a lot better already. There's still a little hump there, so it's still going to compress the, the cork, but it's flying almost flat now, which is, feels better. And the same on this side with those two felt ones. The gasket is just a little bit pressed up, but it's not, not a massive amount. So, right, now we'll just grease this side of the gasket. Um, and then we can get the get the sump on. There we go. Right. Sump. Okay, let's talk about the sump quickly. Um, I'm not sure what's the best way to do this, but maybe like that, I guess. Okay, so look, this is your sump. Um, you've got two very obvious um, features here. This is the side that goes towards the flower wheel. You can see that basically completes the bell housing circle if you see what I mean but the point I wanted to show you was you see here the bolts come through here you've got four bolts that go through there through there and then into the into the block on the other side this is the side that's basically facing the front axle this actually f bolts right up against the front axle and again you can see you've got three bolts that go through here and they run all the way through to here. These ones are the five and a half inch bolts and these ones are the five inch bolts. Okay, And then all around the perimeter you've got these little ones on the side and they are the, I think it's one and a quarter inch bolts. And those, I mean that's the main thing you want to watch for is make sure you get the right length bolts. You can if you measure that versus that, you'll find that this is half an inch longer. And so that's how you know which one goes where. Okay, so now we'll move and we'll get this onto the engine. Okay, so here we are again. Got my sump. And as I said, the round side goes towards the flower wheel. We want to try and bring this down gently so we don't move that gasket and get it lined up as best we can. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a couple of the shorter bolts in just to hold it in place and then we'll tackle the longer ones. Put one on that side and one on this side and then we should be we should be about right. Okay. 
Okay, right, so that's now holding the sump in place. Okay, I just adjusted the camera to give you a better view. Again, we can see we've got four on this side and three on this side in terms of the longer bolts. As I said, the, these ones are five inch and these are five and a half inch in, in length. So, here's our five inch ones. And there's a five and a half inch. And of course. Now as with anything like this, what you want to do is get all your bolts in and thread it before you start tightening anything. Because inevitably you do need them, to, you need it to move a little bit. A little bit of downward pressure on the bolt just helps it to go through or past the gasket. Right, now we've got all the one and a quarter inch bolts. Okay, slight mistake, um, when, we, when I was putting the oil for, uh, pump on, I said there was no gasket for that. There is in fact a gasket in the set, so as you can see, I've taken the sump off again, and we're just going to quickly pop this gasket on. It's probably, I should have checked the, the set before I uh, said so confidently that there's no gasket here. The um, the reason I was convinced that there's no gasket is because obviously this is all inside the sump and there, there wouldn't really be that much of an issue if it leaked oil um, because it's all in the, in the sump anyway. But of course, I guess you do want it to build pressure and you don't want that pressure escaping. So that's why they provide you a, a gasket. Whereas on here, the join between the top face and the body there is there there isn't a gasket. There definitely isn't, and um, that's because they basically it's a machine face. And you remember, if you watched our video where we restored the pump, you will have seen us um, uh, refacing those surfaces to make sure that we got a a really good seal. Um, but of course, that's the low pressure side of the pump. So there is I mean, there's basically no pressure there, so it's highly unlikely to leak anyway. Whereas this side is the high pressure side, and that's why there is actually a gasket. 
So, Oscar, can you, um, there's a gasket up there, if you can bring it for me, please. Yeah. And let's um, quickly pop that on. Is it this one? No. It's got three holes in it. And it looks like a boat. This one. Correct, yeah. Now, we won't bother with grease or anything on this one because it's literally just going on, straight on, and then... We are bolting it down, so there's no no issue. But remember, one of the reasons that we put grease on is so that if we make a mistake like this and we do need to take the thing off again, as we did have to with the sump, the gasket comes off nicely without tearing, and there's it just makes it easier to just check there's no mistake. to remove. <laughs> and uh, well, I'm not really sure I can make a mistake on this one now, Oscar, because. Mm. It's a very distinct shape, and you did line up the hole. There was a little hole in the a, a cutout in the the main hole, mm -hmm. and you lined that up. So there's really no other way it can go, right? Mm. So anyway, right. So we'll quickly we'll carry on with this. There's no point filming this again, and then we'll come back when we're uh, just about ready to finish off the sump. Okay, so right, we're back to where we were. We've now got all the bolts tightened down to the point where the spring washer is compressed, but we, but they're not tight. Um, now, and the reason I wanted to show you from here, so the important thing now, this is an aluminium sump, and that means it's reasonably soft. It's not a precision part like the head, um, so it's not like you have to follow a particular pattern when tightening the bolts, but you do want to try to tighten it reasonably evenly. The way I do that is I basically start in one corner and I just give each bolt a twist. And it basically just go around the whole thing doing the same thing, the same kind of, you know, tightening the same amount as, as best you can. There's no torque setting or anything like that, it's just a case of tightening the stump down in an even manner. So do it, you know, evenly, consistently, whatever you want to use, whatever term you want to use. But the idea is to take it down evenly and not stress or buckle the aluminium. Of course we want it to seal down on the gasket nice and tight as well, but remember these are half inch bolts, they're not um, particularly strong like head bolts, so you do need to be careful. Right, so now we just nip them again, it's like a maybe an eighth of a turn at a time, if you can, but don't force it. Like these down here now, they feel a lot tighter, so they're getting like a sixteenth of a turn. And that's pretty much it. Um, just checking to make sure that these cork gaskets have gone down. This one looks like it might still be sticking up a little bit, so we'll just let me get a bigger spanner. We'll just tighten these up again. Be wary of these longer bolts, they have more twist in them, so they may not feel as tight as they are. In other words, you may feel like they're loose, but actually 
It's the bolt itself that's twisting and you need to be careful not to snap them off, obviously. So again, we just go around, just nipping them. Make sure everything is nice and firm, nice and taut, without overstressing anything. That all seems to have tightened down nicely. There's not a lot of space in here for a ring spanner, which is a bit annoying. Set spanner. Okay. Well, I'm going to call that done. Um, so, things to remember there is a gasket for the oil pump. Um, Line your gasket up nicely, obviously make sure your faces are nice and clean. Line your gasket up nicely, bring your bolts in and then basically just e tighten it down evenly as, as you go. Right, last job on the sump really is to get the oil filter in. The oil, sorry, the oil pickup gauze. Now there is a gasket for that as well. Uh, again, in your bottoms gasket set, so there it is there. What I'm going to do on this one, I'm just going to cover both sides of the gasket with a bit of grease. Um, it's not the end of the world, this one really. Um, not a very big gasket, but let's just get it covered just in case we need to take this off again at some point. Now this pickup gauze is um, a little fiddly to get on. You basically have to get it over that pickup part on the oil pump and also obviously in here at the same time. So yeah, let's just see how we go. Um, we'll get that gasket on there nicely. Perfect. Okay, let me just wash my hands. Wipe my hands. Great Oscar, I want to show people. To show people the hole on the bottom. Um, so, I think the pickup pipe goes in through that hole. And then. Yeah. So, you remember on the oil pump, we had that pipe and it's kind of sitting at 90 degrees here, like that, right? Yeah. So, that's sticking out here at the moment, but it's actually back here somewhere. And that has to that has to go onto that pipe, and the pipe basically sits inside the gauze, and that just stops the pickup pipe from picking up any big lumpy stuff. Okay. Okay. Now, if you look, that hole is not in the center; it's at the top. Mm. The bear in mind the engine's upside down now. What we want is we want that pickup pipe to be at the bottom of the gauze. Is my understanding. So basically, when you're putting it on with the engine upside down, that hole needs to be at the top, yeah. right? So if you can pop that in there. In fact, let's just turn the engine so people can see this. Hang on. This engine's getting heavier every day. Yeah. Right, that's the angle. I can get. Right, there we go. So that's um, hopefully a better angle. Right, Oscar? Yeah. Can you feel that 
Huh? You think you got it in the hole? Yeah. No. It, you just let mm. you'll feel it you feel the hole, feel it going into the hole, and then you need to give it a little push. Yeah. Well, what mind your fingers. Hang on, it's gotta go straight. Mm. Oh. There we go. Okay. Okay. Hi guys. How's it going? Well, we get in there. We're just uh, finishing off the sun. So we're just going to pop this on there. Wow. So we need how many nuts, Oscar? Um, six. Okay, so I, um, I've actually got new nuts for this and so we may as well give it some new washers as well. So these have a flat washer and a spring washer. The flat washer basically just helps to spread the load on this plate and then of course the lock washer just um, locks it all in place and um, prevents the nuts from coming off. Do you mean spring washer? What did I say? Lock washer. Yeah, yeah, it's a spring washer, you're right, that's probably more accurate. Now remember, the nuts have a little shoulder on them, the shoulder goes down. So we'll just... Now look, this is it uh, for this video, we're not going to um, go any further. This is, you know, that's basically fitting the sump. That's about all there is to it really. Um, the most important thing really is to get a good seal on the sump and make sure that you get it nicely tightened down um, and obviously the gasket should then do its job and give you a nice good tight oil seal um, this piece that we're doing here now really is just finishing off whilst we've got the engine here so the next job the next um, video then is going to be the we're going to turn the engine back up and we're going to start working on the valve train um, but as part of that, what we're actually going to do is strip the rocker arm, um, take all the rockers off, clean up, clean each one up, and uh, make sure that we've got a, a lovely smooth surface on the um, uh, on the cam on the rocker lobe. Um, it's like a, it looks like a cam, half a cam uh, um, profile that actually runs against the top of the valves. And what we want to do is make sure that those are nice and smooth. We don't have any um, sort of burrs or anything on there. Then we'll reassemble the whole rocker arm and we'll get it onto the engine. We can then put the push rods in, lock down the rocker arm, and we can set the tappets, at least do an initial setting, and get the rocker arm, rocker cover on, the tappet cover um, on. Once we get to that stage, I think it's then time basically to put the engine back onto the tractor. Uh, no, actually that's not right. We will need to put the flywheel on and the clutch on next uh, before it can go on to, back onto the tractor. So yeah, that'll be, uh, we'll have to do that before we, we slide it back on. But to do that, we will have to take it off the engine stand. Um, so what we'll do is we'll get it into, onto the engine crane and rest it on the sump, um, on some engine stands, get the clutch on, and then it'll be ready to go back into the tractor. We'll get it bolted onto the tractor, get, uh, get all that sorted out, um, and then we will move to working on the front axle um, and getting all of that sorted out before we bolt that back on. Um, but slowly but surely, we're getting there now, and um, yeah, it's beginning to come together. Anyway, that's it for this week. Um, hope you all have a great week, and uh, we'll see you on the next video. Cheers for now.